What a time to be alive. We live amongst modern day prophets. They walk among us. People who, when they see your little real estate name tag, will tell you, after looking at their invisible crystal ball, that the market is going to crash. This bubble is going to burst. They have no idea when. Can't tell you that much. But it's going to happen. And then all these people who are fighting for homes and in multiple offers, driving up the price, that they just don't know what they're doing. And they're going to wait. They're going to wait because they remember what it was like in 2011 when you could get a house here for $60,000. It's a beautiful story, not reflective of what it's like now, 10 years later. And I understand math is hard. So let's go through a little bit of math that will hopefully give you some perspective, especially for my buyers. <laughs> my poor buyers, it is really brutal out there. But it's easy to feel resentful when you are giving more money after you've already come over asking and you are putting down all this due diligence money and it just seems unhinged. But perspective and math and not crystal balls is everything. I have completely already done the work on this ahead of time. So I'm not even, this is going to be like the, the cooking channel where like they chop everything up, but it's already made in the oven. It's already made in the oven. I'm not going to make you sit through all the math that I did. The long arduous math that mostly came from an, uh, an online calculator. All right. I'm going to give you back 2011. I'm going to give you what you asked for because that's what you want. According to you, crystal ball holder, uh, you want 2011 when you could buy real estate for so much cheaper, right? Here. Everywhere. Post crash. All right. 2011. Let's start with, let's do a $400,000 house. Okay, and let's assume that we put 10% down. Now, if you've not bought a home in a while, you do not have to put 20% down. You can put as little as like 3.5% down. We won't go into all that. All right, so let's say we do 10% down, and that equates to, I should be able to do that in my head. I did go to public, that I should have been able to do that. I didn't, I put it in the calculator. 30-year <laughs> loan, and then I'm gonna give you back, because that's what you want, right? That's what you want your 2011 back. So I'm going to give you back your interest rate. And your interest rate in 2011 was about 4.85%. People would faint in the street if we gave them tomorrow 4.85%. They would because they're used to paying low rates now. But I'm going to give it back because that's what you wanted. That's what you're waiting for. Right? Right? Yeah. Okay. So if we don't include your taxes and homeowners insurance, flood insurance, anything like that, if we just do your principal and interest, that monthly payment for that, that gives you $1,899 a month, okay? That's what you want, right? Now I'm going to give you 2021. 2021. And now prices have gone bonkers, right? And so now let's say that house is $475. Same house, same house, different time, same house. And I'm going to keep it at 10% interest. 10% interest, 10% down, Casey. All right, and that I should also be able to do the math on that, and I'm not going to. It's uh, 47500 all right. Same house, it's worth repeating. And now I'm going to give you today's interest rate, which I just checked. It was about 3%. But it's been, it's gone down, like it went down heavy duty, it was 2.5 at uh, another part of the year, and that, it's around 3% right now, okay? 3%, 3% interest, uh, okay? And then that, if we, again, no taxes or insurance, that monthly payment, I'm not even going to show you right away. I'm not even going to show you. What do you think it is? Higher or lower? I just added $75,000 to the cost of this house. It should be higher, right? It should be, but it's not. That is your monthly payment. 1802, $1,802. Compared to what you want, what you're waiting for, which is a higher payment. Now, why is that? But we get hung up on this right now. Instead of seeing what actually impacts us, 
more often for 30 whole years, which is that interest rate. When you take a chunk of, of the, the cost of the home, remember we're pulling that over 30 years, that interest rate is just gonna punch you in the throat over and over and over and over and over again. And for quite a while, if you look at what's called your amortization, all the payments of your home stretch over 30 years. In the beginning, for quite a while, you're just paying interest. You're not even chipping away that principal. So the interest rate has a huge impact. And we tend to not look at that because when interest rates change, they seem to change by marginal values. We don't see uh, as people, a huge difference between 3 and 3.5, but that does have a big difference on your monthly payment. Instead, we see I'm paying $10,000, $15,000, $20,000, $30,000 over asking price, and that is what we focus on when in reality that interest rate is really hitting us hard. But I don't quite know why anyone would pray or hope or wait for a bubble or a crash. I don't know if you remember 2008, but it was carnage. Absolutely zero people were walking around going, let's go to an open house. I want to buy a house today. Oh, honey, look, the fifth foreclosure on that street. Let's hop inside and make him an offer. It wasn't like that. It was terrible. People lost everything. And Lenders weren't exactly writing loans like they are today. Credit freezes when there's trauma in the economy, in our financial ecosystem. And so the idea that a crash is going to come, because you're assuming it's going to come, and that prices are going to go back down to 2011, and that interest rates are going to stay at this nice nice is not even the word, this delicious, this decadently low level, and that credit will be freely flowing, and you'll just be able to get these things for so much cheaper, is not actually the matrix of the mortgage industry and how this all works. It will not happen like that. If we did have a bubble, your lending would freeze, your interest rates would change. I mean, everything would kind of just go to hell. So hoping for a bubble and waiting for a bubble doesn't actually make sense. Moreover, let's say today you're a seller and you are saying to me, uh, I'm not going to sell right now because I'm waiting for prices to go down so that I can buy something cheaper. And so at that point, I would get out my trusty little kitchen dry erase board, which usually has my grocery list on it. Not that I don't stare at these things all the time. Uh, and I would say, okay, well, today we could sell your house for four seventy-five. dollars Let's say that we wait until that crash or bubble that you want so bad, and then I can only get you $400. Well, here's what happened. Yes, you will be able to go out and shop for a cheaper house, but I just lost $75,000 on the sale of your home. So it's a wash. It's an absolute wash. I've done some other videos about how to handle when you want to sell and you need to buy but that doesn't make any sense. At the end of the day, the best deal for a home is, is the home you absolutely love that you can afford. And so try as hard as it is when you're going through all this to not get hung up on, on that race during multiple offers and feeling so angry over $5,000. That is a lot of money. But in the scheme of things, while these rates are low, and if you really love the house, how much is your time worth? And if it's the house you really love that you can afford, that's the best deal you can find.